So now we're going into the build phase of this project, which I enjoy. I'm going to use a piece of cherry that's an urban salvage board. It's got some issues, but it's a good piece of wood, so I'm going to make as much of this camera out of this piece as I can. But first I've got to work on it a little bit. So I'm working here on the camera base. Everything is going to be hanging on this board. So it's got to be nice and flat. So what I'm doing here is making sure one side is flat and then I scribe that face. And I'll cut the other side down to that line and that'll give me a consistent thickness. There are easier ways to do this. <laughs> thickness planer starting with a board that's really flat, <laughs> stuff like that. But I wanted to make this lumber work, so I was not gonna give up. This is also why it's really, really nice to have a flat bench, because you can use it as your flatness gauge for most cases like this. Just check to see here if it if it uh, moves back and forth, if I feel a little wobble in it. To prevent the base from warping, I decided to add some breadboard ends. Every board will warp. Um, plywood resists it, but this is natural wood and it's going to either cup one way or the other over time, so I decided I would do what I could to stabilize it. So I cut a mortise with the table saw. I didn't like the V shapes at the bottom of the mortise. So I'll clean it up with my router table. And I use that term loosely here. It has a router, it's sort of a table. And actually it's a, it's a pretty precise setup. It's very purpose built. So this is a great fit there, and it's just because the uh, tenon and mortise were very square, and the tenon wasn't forcing the mortise open. But the other side, it wasn't a square fit, and it forced a little gap open. It's not structural, but it didn't fit as well as I'd like.
This may have worked with just one drive gear, but I used two. So here I'm cutting room for the gears, and I started with some precise sort of guesstimates about where the gears would sit, and then I'm very careful not to cut all the way through, I didn't want to have them protrude out the bottom. And here I'm just trying to trim a little more room, but I became very aware that drill bits don't like to edge cut, they like to follow a hole, and you can see it deflect, it's pushing the whole piece out of the way, I thought that was interesting. And here I'm just making it a little bit larger with a larger Forstner bit just to hide that little experiment. When you're building stuff, hiding mistakes is part of the art form. And then here I'm just using a router bit to clean up the bottom of the hole because I didn't want to punch anything through. And the Forstners have a very small little tip on it and I didn't want that to punch. So I just cleaned up the bottom with that guy. And it bothered me that these two holes were not perfectly aligned, so I did a little cleanup here. I didn't show it, but I used some 5-minute epoxy to set those tracks in the slots. And here I'm testing the fit before I make it permanent, or at least put screws in it. So here I'm cutting pilot holes for the brass inserts 
and this bit was driving me nuts. It was cutting like it was a masonry bit or something. <laughs> I got to invest in a few uh, new bits. This is not the best way to do this. Using jam nuts is a good way, but it doesn't go in straight, as you can see. I get better at this later in the project. And uh, one way is to use the uh, drill press with the power off to drive that in. Much better. I love the look of these heavy brass screws on the base. That's just about it for this phase of the build. I just wanted to get the base working and the focus rack gear mechanism working. It needs a couple adjustments, but it's getting there. We'll fix it. Be sure to subscribe if you want to be alerted on the rest of the series. Thanks for watching.